in the shadowed crevices of our shared past, in the twilight between the known and the unknown, there lies a realm where the extraordinary masquerades as the mundane. This ethereal realm, adorned in velvety darkness, is home to those most elusive of phantoms, where stories shapeshift between the centuries, flutter on the breath of a whisper, a fleeting dream, or a chill running down one's spine. Good evening, my weary travelers. My name is Mr. Rook. I am your guide in these enigmatic, hallowed halls where we shall illuminate the obscure and whisper life into the forgotten. Here, myth and superstition take center stage, where legends and folk tales from lands both near and far come to whisper their truths. Join me as we pull back the veil of this mundane world to reveal the magic that lies just beneath the surface of our everyday lives and peer into the heart of the arcane. Welcome, dear friends, to Scary Tales. Good evening. Welcome to another captivating episode of Scary Tales, where myths and legends come alive under the moonlit sky. Tonight we delve into the enchanting waters of mermaid lore, a topic that has stirred human imagination across the globe for centuries. Mermaids, those elusive beings that straddle the line between the human world and the mysteries of the deep, have long been a source of fascination and wonder, with their haunting beauty and enigmatic presence, they've captivated sailors and land dwellers alike, weaving an intricate tapestry of myths, tales, and legends in cultures far and wide. From the serene waters of the Aegean Sea to the mysterious depths of the Baltic, tales of mermaids have been whispered in hushed tones, sung about in ballads, and depicted in art throughout history. These aquatic sirens, often portrayed as having the upper body of a woman and the tail of a fish, are said to embody both the alluring beauty of the sea and its unfathomable danger. So, let us embark on this mystical journey across the seven seas as we explore just a few of the numerous stories of mermaid folklore. From the benevolent to the ominous, from the ancient sirens of Greek mythology to the ethereal rusalka of Slavic tales, we will uncover the secrets that ripple beneath the surface of these legendary aquatic maidens. Prepare to be submerged in a world where fantasy and reality blur and where the mermaid song echoes in the depths of our collective psyche. Welcome to the mystical world of mermaids. Delving into the annals of history, we trace the origins of mermaid mythology back to ancient civilizations where the first whispers of these mystical beings began. Among the earliest known merfolk tales is the myth of Oannes from Babylonian mythology. Oannes, a remarkable fish-like being, is believed to have emerged from the Erythian Sea around the 3rd millennium BC. Described by the ancient Babylonian priest Barossus in the 3rd century BC, Oannes was said to be instrumental in teaching early Mesopotamians various aspects of civilization, including writing, arts, and sciences. His depiction as a creature of both land and sea marks him as a forerunner to the mermaid myths that span cultures worldwide. In the wake of Oan's profound influence, we encounter a figure of beguiling allure in the annals of ancient Assyrian legend, Atargatis. This deity, celebrated for her breathtaking beauty and revered as a goddess of fertility, graced the 10th century BC with tales as abundant as the fish that swim in the ocean's depths. Among these tales, there is one that rises above the rest, a narrative steeped in love and tragedy. It is said that Atargatis, struck by a love profound and deep, bestowed her heart upon a mortal man named Simeos. From their union, a daughter was born. Tragically, fate dealt its cruel hand as Simeos perished, some whisper from the overwhelming might of divine passion. Stricken with unbearable grief, Atargatis, seeking solace and oblivion, cast herself into the depths of a lake. Her immortal essence defied the clutches of death, and in her attempt to transform into a simple fish, the majesty of her divine beauty intervened. Thus, she was only partially metamorphosed, resulting in the creation of the mermaid, a being of both land and sea, forever a symbol of beauty's eternal grip and the unending dance between the human world and the aquatic realm. And what of the fate of Atargatis's forsaken child, you might wonder? 
Fear not, for destiny's tapestry is often woven with threads of serendipity and care. In this tale, the infant, left to the whims of fate, was not forgotten. Instead, she found sanctuary in the gentle embrace of nature. A flock of doves, creatures of grace, and servants of the goddess herself descended to cradle the child in their wings. These celestial messengers became her guardians, nurturing her with the tenderness only such divine creatures could bestow. As the wheel of time turned, this child, nurtured by doves, blossomed into a majestic figure. She was to be known as Semiramis, a legendary Assyrian queen. Her story, a testament to the enduring bond between mortal and divine, weaves a narrative that enthralls and captivates, reminding us of the intricate and often mysterious ways in which the fates intertwine our lives. Venturing forth from the ancient sands of Assyria into the azure waters of the Mediterranean, we find ourselves amidst the legends of ancient Greece, where the enchanting and perilous sirens dwell. These creatures, woven into the fabric of Greek mythology, initially emerged not as the fish-tailed maidens we often conjure in our minds today, but as beings far more avian than aquatic. Originally depicted as part bird and part woman, these sirens were said to reside on the rocky shores of islands, their hauntingly beautiful songs luring unsuspecting sailors towards treacherous cliffs and certain doom. The origins of these mythical sirens can be traced back to a tale steeped in divine drama. They were once the companions of the goddess Demeter, specifically the nymphs who attended to her. Their transformation into the bird women of law was a punishment meted out by Demeter herself for failing to prevent the abduction of her daughter Persephone by Hades. This tragic twist of fate ties the sirens to themes of loss and longing, their melancholic melodies echoing the grief of their own unfulfilled lives. It's this sorrow that resounds in the ears of those who hear their call, a siren song that is as beautiful as it is deadly. One of the most famous encounters with these mythical creatures is found in the Odyssey, the epic tale of Odysseus. As he navigates his way home from the Trojan War, Odysseus is warned by the sorceress Circe about the dangers of the siren song. Heeding her advice, Odysseus orders his men to fill their ears with beeswax and binds himself to the mast of his ship so that he might hear their song without succumbing to its call. As his ship sails through the siren's waters, their beguiling voices reach out, laden with promises and secrets. Yet bound tightly, Odysseus resists their call, a testament to human will and resilience in the face of enchanting yet destructive temptations. The transformation from winged sirens to aquatic enchantresses illustrates how myths evolve, influenced by cultural exchanges and the passage of time. These changes reflect our ever-shifting relationship with the mysteries of the sea and the creatures that dwell within its fathoms. Before we leave the ancient Mediterranean, let us voyage to the cerulean depths of the Aegean Sea, where the whispering waves carry the tale of Thessaloniki, a figure shrouded in the mists of Greek lore. Thessaloniki, the half-sister of the legendary Alexander the Great, bore the legacy of Macedonia's mightiest king. Yet it is not just her royal lineage that captures our imagination, but the extraordinary turn her fate took upon Alexander's untimely demise. Grief-stricken by her brother's death, Thessaloniki was engulfed by the dark waves of sorrow, leading her to the brink of the abyss. In her despair, she sought solace in the embrace of the sea, a leap that was to be her end. But as the fates would have it, the gods had other plans. Instead of succumbing to the watery depths, Thessaloniki emerged, transformed by divine will into a mermaid, an ethereal being of the deep. According to myth, she traverses the waters of the Aegean still, her presence both alluring and foreboding. Sailors speak of encounters with this mermaid who emerges from the foam, her hair a cascading veil shimmering with droplets of the ocean. Thessaloniki, in her eternal search for her beloved brother, approaches seafarers with a question that holds their fate. Is King Alexander alive? Only the wise know the answer that would quell her tempestuous heart. He lives and reigns and conquers the world. 
This response, and only this response, will transform her anguish into a serene benevolence, ensuring the sailor's safe passage. Yet, woe betide those who know not the answer or dare to speak falsely. For Thessaloniki's wrath is as fierce as the storm she will summon, as she transforms into a terrifying Gorgon, dooming those who crossed her path to the merciless whims of the sea. Thus, the legend of Thessaloniki weaves together the threads of history and mythology, a poignant reflection of the eternal bond between a sister and her brother, transcending even the boundaries of mortal life and entering the realm of the eternal. In her story, we find a vivid embodiment of the ancient Greeks' connection to the sea and their belief in the extraordinary, where the lines between the human and the divine beautifully blur. Sailing further north to the cold Atlantic waters of medieval Europe, our tapestry of tales brings us to another enchanting mermaid figure, Melusine. Cloaked in the mists of European folklore, Melusine's story is one that entwines love, secrecy, and transformation. Picture, if you will, a maiden of unparalleled beauty with a secret as deep as the ocean's depths. Melusine, a creature of dual nature, was said to be a woman of fair countenance and grace on land, but upon the embrace of water she transformed, revealing her true form, a mermaid with the shimmering tail of a fish. In the verdant forests of Coulombier in Poitou, France, our tale finds its roots. It was here that Raymondin of Poitou, while wandering lost and forlorn, stumbled upon the ethereal Melusine. Captivated by her otherworldly beauty, he proposed marriage. Melusine, a being of both water and land, consented with a singular condition. Raymondin must never seek her on Saturdays, her day of seclusion. For years their union flourished. Melusine, ever the devoted wife, bore Raymondin ten sons and used her mystical powers to erect magnificent castles, each a testament to their love. Yet, as fate would have it, tranquility was not destined to last. Raymondin, spurred by familial whispers and gnawing suspicion, betrayed his vow. Peering into her sacred chamber on a Saturday, he beheld his wife in her true form, a mermaid, a creature of the deep. Raymondin, though shocked, harbored his secret until tragedy struck. Amidst the turmoil of their son's fratricidal act, Raymondin's grief and anger unveiled the truth. In a moment of despair, he accused Melusine of being a serpent, unraveling the fragile tapestry of their trust. Upon hearing these words, Melusine transformed into a formidable dragon, her wails of sorrow resounding through the kingdom as she vanished into the ether, never to be seen in daylight again. Legend whispers that Melusine, bound by maternal love, returned under the cloak of night to nurse her youngest children. Her presence, it is said, lingered as a guardian spirit over her lineage. Even in the days of Brantome, echoes of her lament could be heard, a mournful serenade circling the turrets of Lusignan Castle on the eve of its ruin. As we navigate through the oceans of myth and legend, it becomes evident that the figure of the mermaid is not exclusive to any one culture or geography. Each civilization has spun its own version of these enigmatic sea beings, often reflecting their unique cultural contexts and values. In the depths of Slavic lore, there lurks the Rusalka, a spectral embodiment of water's enigmatic essence. Originally revered as benign spirits, these nymphs of the river and lake were guardians of nature's verdant bounty, nurturing the growth of crops with their life-giving touch. Yet, as the centuries turned, their visage darkened, mirroring the shifting tides of human belief and fear. By the haunting gloom of the 19th century, these once benevolent beings had transformed in the collective psyche into harbingers of doom. The Rusalka, now depicted as ethereal maidens with tresses long and wild as the river currents, became symbols of sorrow and vengeance. Bound to the earthly realm by their untimely demise, often victims of betrayal or unrequited love, they were denied the sanctity of a proper burial. Their spirits, lingering at the water's edge, were twisted by grief and loss into mournful phantoms. These lamenting souls, with their melancholic songs, weave tales of woe. 
They are said to ensnare the hearts of unwary men, drawing them into the murky depths with whispers of unfulfilled desires and unquenched yearnings. The Rusalka's tale is a chilling reminder of the fragile boundary between life and death and the dire consequences of ignoring the solemn rites owed to the departed. In their haunting presence, one can almost hear the echoes of their lost lives, a chilling testament to the power of memory and the unending search for retribution and peace. Among the myriad of mermaid tales, The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen stands as a pillar of poignant storytelling. Andersen's original narrative, penned in 1837, is a far cry from the light-hearted rendition popularized by Disney. While both versions share a young mermaid's fascination with the human world and her love for a human prince, the similarities largely end there. In Anderson's tale, the little mermaid, longing for an immortal soul and the love of a human prince, makes a grave bargain with the sea witch. In exchange for legs, she gives up her beautiful voice, enduring excruciating pain with every step she takes on land. Most tragically, the prince marries another, and the mermaid faces a heart-rending choice, to kill the prince and return to the sea, or to dissolve into sea foam. Yet, unlike Disney's adaptation where love triumphs and Ariel finds her happily ever after, Anderson's story concludes with the mermaid's selfless sacrifice. She chooses to spare the prince's life, turning into sea foam. It's a tale of unrequited love, sacrifice, and the yearning for something beyond one's reach. Themes that resonate with the depth of human experience. This stark contrast between the original story and its popular adaptation highlights the complexity of mermaid lore. It reflects our tendency to reshape narratives, infusing them with contemporary values and desires. Anderson's mermaid becomes a poignant symbol of longing and loss, a stark departure from the more optimistic and romanticized interpretations in modern media. From the seductive to the sinister, mermaids embody the dual aspects of nature, serene yet unpredictable, nurturing yet dangerous. They remind us of the untamed, unexplored parts of our world, and perhaps of ourselves. In mermaids, we find the convergence of the real and the imagined, the ordinary and the extraordinary. As we draw to a close on our journey through the shadowy depths and mystical waters, Let us carry with us the echoes of the tales and insights imparted by these enigmatic denizens of the deep. Mermaids, in their myriad forms and tales, beckon us not only to the edge of the sea, but to the very shores of our own imagination and introspection. These creatures, transcending mere beauty, embody the allure of the forbidden, the poignancy of self-sacrifice, and the depths of mourning. They invite us to ponder the more profound mysteries of love, loss, and longing. As we resurface from these fabled waters, let the shimmer of their tales linger in our minds, inspiring us to embrace the infinite realms of wonder and the unexplored territories of our hearts. My dear friends, our tale for this evening has concluded, but our journey does not end here. Visit us again soon. Here in our little corner of the ether, we shall unravel another tale, a story imbued with fear, superstition, and perhaps the occasional sprinkle of fairy dust. We hope you enjoyed tonight's story. Join us again as we delve into the pages of history, folklore, and some things that make us wonder, and perhaps others that make us shudder. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to Scary Tales. We're a small channel, but with your help, we'll continue to grow. Together we'll explore the shadows and the light of the world's most enchanting and terrifying tales. We here at Scary Tales extend our heartfelt wishes for a joyous and prosperous new year to each of you. May this fresh start bring an abundance of happiness, adventure and discovery into your lives. As we step into this new chapter, we are filled with gratitude for your continued support. It's your enthusiasm and engagement that empower us to weave more tales of enchantment and mystery, exploring the shadowed corners of folklore and the uncharted realms of the imagination. Together we shall continue this journey into the mystical and the unknown as we cherish the magic that each day brings. 
Until next time, remember that every tale hides a truth, and every truth hides a tale. Sleep well, and good night.